Hello and welcome to this Data Viz Makeover. I'm Bikram Nayak. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself before we get started. I'm on a mission to make financial research understandable and actionable for investors so that they can make better investing decisions. Right? I specialize in data visualization and data product design. So these are the two levers that I use to uh, make investment research and financial research more understandable and actionable. In this video, I'm going to do a makeover of a Grant Thornton uh, deal tracker report, right? Uh, it's something that they, uh, you know, release every month and uh, it has the same format pretty much. It's just that the data keeps changing. I took a look at it and I felt like it could use some uh, makeovers of the, the charts and the tables so that uh, people who are tracking this finance industry can actually get better insights out of the report. So on the left, you'd see uh, an example of what it looked like and on the right, you'd see a couple of examples uh, of what I've made over, right? Uh, what, I've, what I've improved. So let's kind of take these one by one, right? So this is the makeover target, right? This is one slide from the Grant Thornton deal tracker report from August 2021. Uh, so it's a pretty dense slide and you see a table on top and you see a couple of donut charts on your right side. And these are our makeover targets for this video, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at this table, right? Now, it looks like this uh, simple table, but there's actually plenty of scope to communicate insights a lot better, right? Now, what are the things that I see that are not so great about this table? One, there's a lot of text and no visuals, right? Uh, so th the, the text is processed by a different part of our brain than the visuals and the visuals are processed much faster and we get insights much more clearly. Uh, text, we have to go one by one and actually search for insights, right? And there's only a limited amount of text that we can hold in our mind. So uh, there's no visual way to understand which sector is high in deal volume and uh, which sector is high in deal value. So just to kind of tell you, this table uh, tracks uh, VC investment in different sectors, right? Uh, and the number of investments that were made are volume and the value of those investments are shown on the right side. So the first mistake is there's a lot of text and no visuals, right? The second thing is the table was kind of stretched just to fit a particular size, right? But the information is too far apart. Like I actually read startup on the left, then my eye has to go all the way to the middle where I see the volume is 10 deals. And then I have to go all the way to the right to see that the value of those deals was totally $46 million. So uh, the things that should be read together should be in close proximity generally, right? So that's another problem. And the third problem is, uh, there's no indication of how this table has been sorted, right? Now, if I inspect it manually, then I obviously understand that uh, most likely it's in descending order of volume, right? Deal volume. Uh, but there's no visual indicator that this is in fact the case. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make over this table, right? And we're going to correct these things individually. So how are we going to make this over? We're going to use my user framework for making effective charts, right? Now, what is user? U stands for understand. That is, you got to understand the message. Like, what, are, what am I trying to convey, right? Understand who's the audience. Like, uh, what, what job do they do? What are they trying to get out of this? Uh, how would they act on it? What are they used to seeing? What kind of visuals do they prefer, right? Then there's also the goal that you have, which is it could be to inform them about something, it could be to drive them to take action, uh, it could be to warn them about something, uh, and there's also the data, right? So you have to work with the data. You can't make visuals that don't support, uh, that don't have the underlying data already ready. Uh, then comes the S part, which is select, right? So now we've understood all these different things, and on that basis, we have to select a chart, right? 
uh, and there is a way to do it. It depends on the kind of comparisons you want to enable, the kind of message you want to communicate and so on, right? Then the third part is enhance, which is, okay, now we've chosen a chart, so we need to firstly remove clutter, right? Uh, because by default, like in a lot of these charting softwares, you see very cluttered charts with borders and crazy colors and so on. So we've got to improve the data ink ratio and we've got to use the gestalt principles to remove clutter, right? Then the next step is to create a visual hierarchy. And the way we do that is using something called pre-attentive attributes and also smartly using color and position on the page. Then the third step in enhance is to beautify. And how does one typically beautify? One is we use good fonts, right? And we use good sizes. Second is we use alignment to form clean horizontal and vertical lines. We don't use centered text. We don't use diagonal things, uh, diagonal directions. It's either vertical or horizontal alignment, right? And then smartly using white space. Like even white space can be used very effectively to uh, let's say separate different rows of a table, uh, different columns of a table and so on, right? And finally, there's the R part in user, which is relate. Now, relate means I want to convey the message in a better way, right? Which uh, basically means providing context that is uh, with chart elements like a clear, actionable title and subtitle. You have access titles. Uh, you have uh, access labels, data labels, comments, footnotes, uh, and so on, right? And then there's also explanations like uh, like quoting sources of data and so on, or even annotations. Then comes the enable comparisons part, which is, uh, for example, comparative measures, like uh, what was the value of this metric at the same time last year, or what is the value of this metric against uh, the industry average, uh, or against the best performer in the market, right? Then you also want to ensure a common baseline so that the things that should be compared are always having a common baseline. And finally, you want to add some reference lines. Like, for example, this was the target for all regions in this quarter, or uh, this is the top 25% of the market, right? Uh, and then finally, how you can relate is by describing in words, right? For example, you, you always make sure that we have a good action title that describes exactly what the insight is, right? It's prime real estate, so use it well. And also annotations explaining certain data points and like the context behind them. So this is the user framework to make effective charts that communicate your message successfully that your audience is gonna love, right? So now let's use this user framework to make over this table, okay? So in the understand part, we need to understand what is the key message. So the key message is to help the user understand deal volume and deal value for key sectors, right? Simple. So who's the audience? It's typically investment bankers, finance industry professionals who are kind of senior in level and they just want to track the industry, right? So a couple of things about them. One is they know this topic and the data really well. Second is in the finance industry for better or for worse, everyone's very familiar with data tables as visuals, right? Uh, so that dense data tables, they're kind of familiar with, right? So now going on to S, which is select. Uh, we know that the audience is familiar with tables, right? So we can keep the table as the, the visual, but we need to make this table, we need to add visual elements to the table so that uh, insights come out more clearly, right? People don't actually need to read the text and compare one by one by one. Uh, and a typical way of adding visual elements to a table is maybe with data bars, right? Now, data bars are more dense, so what we can also do is use something like a lollipop chart instead of a data bar so that you're conveying the same message but with less ink, right? So it becomes less visually overwhelming. Moving on to the third step, which is enhance. Uh, here, for example, we can remove borders and we can use good alignment, common baselines uh, and continuity to form rows and columns, right? Uh, and finally, the R part, which is relate. So we want to enable comparisons between the different sectors uh, 
through the visual elements, right? And the way we'll do that is by adding like the lollipop chart. So now I'll show you the made over table, right? So this is the made over table and I'd like to call it a visual table, right? Uh, so you can see that we formed clean lines. So sectors are right aligned. Deal volume has a common baseline. Deal value has a common baseline. The, the values are actually mentioned here as data labels, but there is also a visual element, which is the lollipop chart that shows you that this is the value but this is the number of deals that were there for each uh, sector and this is the value of those deals right and there's also an arrow here to indicate that it has it's sorted in descending order of deal volume now you have this thing down here which is others uh, which is eight but it still belongs right at the end because it's a combination of multiple small sectors right so this way we don't we don't even need borders because all we're using the gestalt principle of uh, continuation to just read across the entire line we know that st st the startup sector is related to this particular lollipop line for deal volume and this particular line for deal value similarly for e-commerce similarly for banking and financial services right so this is the made over table that using the user framework and the way we decided how to make over certain elements. Now I'll just do an old versus new comparison. You can see the old table on top and the new table at the bottom, right? So there's nothing wrong per se with the old table, but when you think about a report that has 15, 20 such visuals, then it becomes really taxing for the reader of that report to gain insights out of it uh, without actually feeling some fatigue. But if they look at the visual at the bottom, they actually get the insights immediately, right? Okay, so let's move on to the second makeover candidate, which are these donut charts that we saw on the right side, right? Now, first I'll take a look at each individual donut, right? And then we'll take a look at the donuts together and see if there's potential to communicate a different kind of message. So the individual donut chart now, first thing is we need to audit the choice of chart in the first place, right? Now, donut charts, yes, a lot of people think it's a good idea to convey uh, a part to whole comparison using a donut chart, but I would disagree with that simply because uh, if you see that there's a hole in the middle of the donut, right? Uh, and that that center part is actually what shows us the angle which allows us to interpret each element's contribution to the total, right? Uh, but in this case, that, that angle itself is missing, so we have to interpret arc length instead. And that's not something we're very good at. So we are unable to make accurate comparisons of one sector versus another, right? So the choice of chart is suboptimal. Use donuts only when you want to convey one big number and highlight it with probably the text put in the middle of the donut. Secondly, uh, you always want to start at 12 o'clock, right? The 12 o'clock position, uh, which is not happening here. Uh, secondly, you want your categories sorted in descending order. Like people want to start reading at 12 and the first category has got to be the biggest and the second is the second largest and so on, right? Th thirdly here, the, the hole in the middle of that donut is too big. So we can't judge any angle and we're just judging arc length, which we're not very good at, right? And finally, the data labels are connected to the individual sectors by lines, which are kind of adding to the clutter, right? So uh, we're using connection, the Gestalt principle of connection to link the label to the segment here, which is suboptimal. Instead, we could just use proximity. We could move the label closer to the segment and the user would automatically understand that this segment uh, is uh, is uh, what do you say aligned with this particular label right now the next thing is the choice of color scheme like from the looks of it there's a dark purple some light purple some lightish pink or red and a gray in between right which would kind of suggest that it's a diverging color scheme right there are there are multiple types of color schemes you have sequential 
diverging you have categorical now this diverging which seems to be used in this particular uh, chart is more useful for a positive and a negative with a neutral in between right this which is not the case here here we're just trying to convey what is the percentage contribution to the total so ideal would have been sequential scale or a categorical scale again we'll use my user framework uh, and evaluate step by step how we're going to improve this visual, right? So the understand part, the key message here is to show the contribution of each sector to the total. Okay, so we have to define the problem well and the problem here is to show the contribution of each sector. So the audience is the same as what we've already discussed, that is finance industry professionals uh, who are very familiar with the topic and the data uh, and they're mostly senior in level. Right. So I would say they they prefer traditional visuals more than slightly non-traditional visuals. Uh, and I would say a pie is more traditional than a donut. Right. So also a pie is way better at showing the contribution of each segment to the total uh, simply because the angles at the center of the pie are what help us communicate that point. Right. Uh, there are multiple alternatives to show contribution to the total, right? Like you could have a donut chart, you could have a bar chart with a total label, and you could also have something called a single stack bar. Uh, but later on, I'll explain why those weren't the best options for this particular use case. Then there's the enhanced step, which is E. And uh, what we'll do here is we'll include the category labels uh, inside the pie just to keep it more compact. Uh, and also the, in terms of color scheme, we'll use the a sequential color scheme. Uh, so one thing we're going to do is we're going to start at 12 o'clock, right? Which is like this position. We start the biggest segment. We show them in descending order. And just to reinforce that we're showing them in descending order, we will use a sequential color scheme where the darkest color corresponds to the biggest segment and the lightest color corresponds to the smallest segment. Okay. And the last step R, which is relate, uh, we want to add context. So the way we would do that here is with a very informative title and subtitle. Okay. So now let me show you the made over donut chart, right, which we are actually remaking as a pie chart. So this is the made over chart, right. So we have a descriptive title where we're showing top sectors by deal volume and the reason I've made deal volume red is it connects with the rest of the chart right and a clear subtitle that adds some context startup sector leads m a deal volume with 10 deals of which three are in the fintech space so you have a clear sense of what the chart is representing and you also have some additional information about this chart right which is the relate part in terms of the chart itself you have starting at 12 o'clock, you have descending order of values, biggest segment first with the deepest color, and you have clear labels, uh, and you know which label corresponds to which segment, right? And it's much easier to figure out what is the contribution of each segment to the total. So a pie chart is a chosen makeover. I'll show you the options that weren't considered just after showing you this uh, old versus new comparison, right? So on the left, you have the old donut chart and on the right, you have the new pie chart. And you can see that it's much easier to gain insights out of the new pie chart. Just getting back to those visuals that uh, weren't selected, right? So a better donut chart in this case uh, with a slightly smaller hole in the middle and the labels moved inside, it's still it's better than the original but it's still not as good as a pie because those angles at the center of the circle are not maintained right it, the, the middle option is the single stacked bar right which is great when we want to show contribution to the total and uh, subtotal might also be a consideration like for example category a plus b uh, but the problem here is we're comparing lengths, right? We don't have a common baseline for all these different categories. So that's not great either, since we want to show percentage contribution of each category. And finally, on the right side, we have a total bar chart, which is 
like normal bar but where you indicate visually that the the different uh, categories add up to 100% right now this is great for showing category a versus category b and so on but it's not great for showing how much did they contribute to the total right so neither all these options are good in their own way but they didn't serve our particular purpose right which was served by this pie chart so i made over the individual donut but now there is an actually a unique opportunity to make over these this paired donut this two donut charts combo that we have we can actually make them over into one powerful visual right there's a there's an opportunity to convey a better message about what for example does a categories deal volume have a proportional contribution to its deal value for example if the startup sector contributed 10% of the deal volume does it contribute 10% of the deal value or is it more or is it less so that flow between volume and value is a very powerful uh, comparison right uh, and it gives great insights so the best way to kind of do this over is using a proportion plot uh, came came across this uh, from uh, this data with rockstar called stephanie evergreen you should check out her website it's great there's some great resources and also her book uh, so this proportion plot i created uh, shows the flow between uh, deal volume versus deal value so on the left side you have the volume share of each sector and on the right side you have the value share of each sector right uh, so you can see that startup has a high percentage of deal volume but very low percentage of deal value and banking and financial service has a very as a smallish percentage of deal volume but very high percentage of deal value so you can see where it's disproportionate right uh yeah so what's good about this proportion plot is that on the left side it acts like a stacked column right and on the right side it acts like a stacked column so you can read these individually also to understand what is the volume share of each category right and what is the value share of each category and then there's the middle part that shows you the flow between left and right so you have three main components to this all of which play their own role right so that's basically it we made over three visuals we saw a table which we then converted into a visual table with a lollipop chart we had a donut chart that we converted into a pie chart uh, and we evaluated several options and then we had this paired donut chart that we combined into a proportion plot right so that brings us to the end of this particular video that is making over grant thornton's deal tracker report uh, let me know your thoughts what do you think uh, would you have done anything differently uh, did you enjoy it or uh, did you feel like i could have done better just let me know your thoughts right uh, and this is again an old versus new comparison and finally i just want to say i'm on a mission to make financial research more understandable right and more usable that's the whole point more usable to make better investing decisions and i specialize in data products and data visualization so if you'd like to talk i'm happy to talk uh, either about investment research in general or if you need my help with data visualization or data products for financial research please reach out to me on linkedin my name is vikram nayak and you can see the link here just reach out to me dm me and i'm happy to take it forward see you soon